When Warren Buffett was just 25 years old, he started his first investing firm. He named it Buffett Partnership. This investing firm existed from 1957 to 1969, and in its time, Buffett achieved an average return of 29.5%. And the interesting thing about the way Warren Buffett invests is that he actually uses very simple methods when it comes to investing to achieve these high returns. Uh, as Buffett says, you don't need to be a rocket scientist. Investing is not a game where the guy with the 160 IQ beats the guy with a 130 IQ. Rationality is essential. So the key with achieving high returns is being rational and following simple strategies and sticking to them when times get tough. Now what I want to do in this video is teach you 7 investing rules that Buffett has used to help achieve such a high return. But I'm not saying that you're going to achieve a return as high as Buffett's. I mean he has dedicated his life to investing and he's a very wise man. Nevertheless if you can follow these 7 investing rules from Warren Buffett, it will drastically help your overall long term return. So this was a rule that Warren Buffett learned when he first picked up one of the greatest investing books of all time. The Intelligent Investor by Ben Graham, who later became Buffett's mentor. Now one of the rules taught in the book was actually very simple. The rule convinced Buffett that when you own a stock, you own a piece of a business. And over the long term, if that business does well, the stock will also do well. So look for the companies that are going to dominate in the future. Ones that make a high profit margin. Ones that are ahead of their competition. One that consumers love. You don't need to complicate it guys. A stock is part of a business and if that business does well, you will do well. This may be considered an unpopular opinion from Buffett, but most news that you consume is actually not necessary when it comes to investing. You see the thing is, news programs like CNBC, news websites, financial YouTubers, they're all paid to get as much views as possible. So what they do, they create as much hype or tension, uh, they create as much news as they possibly can in order to get those views so that they can get paid more. You really only need to pay attention to about 5% of that news. Uh, as Buffett says, Owners of stocks, however, too often let their capricious and often irrational behavior of their fellow owners to cause them to behave irrationally as well. Because there is so much chatter about markets, the economy, interest rates, price behavior of stocks, etc. Uh, some investors believe it is important to listen to pundits and worse yet, important to consider acting upon their comments. Don't worry about the pundits and don't worry about most of the news. Pay attention to the key and important details, and that's it. Now, I hope this is a financial principle that you have been taught before. Compound interest is powerful. When you get dividends or capital gains, and you let that compound on itself and grow like a snowball, you can make a lot of money. But if you're constantly buying and selling stocks, you're not letting compound interest do its thing and you will miss out on a lot of returns just like the blue line. That's why they say it's all about time in the market, not timing the market. So the key with investing is when you buy a stock, you should really plan on owning that quality business forever. And you know that's why Buffett has owned stocks like Coca-Cola, uh, Wells Fargo and American Express for over 25 years. Uh, as the great Phil Fisher says, if the job has been correctly done when a common stock is purchased, the time to sell is almost never. Now the great thing about investing is that we're not in this alone. Uh, even Warren Buffett throughout his investing career 
has always been learning and listening to other investors. When he was younger, he had the investing mentor, Benjamin Graham, who taught him the ropes of investing. Uh, when he got a bit older, he always had Charlie Munger at his side to see if he had the right opinion on things. Uh, and the lucky thing for us is we've got the great investors to listen to and learn from as well. Obviously, Warren Buffett, we can see the exact stocks that he buys each year and his overall portfolio. Uh, Ray Dalio, he's often on CNBC expressing his opinion on things. Same with Charlie Munger. But the key is we have to listen to those that we know and trust. Do we really have to listen to that pundit who's always raving about the latest hype on CNBC? Or, or the new YouTuber getting a lot of views talking about owning Tesla stock? Do they really understand investing? Do they really understand the intrinsic value of each stock? Only listen to those you know and trust. This is a very simple rule, but one in which not too many people follow, and that is understand the company that you're investing in. You know, if we take a look at Warren Buffett's portfolio, one thing that you'll notice is that a lot of companies that he owns are actually very simple. You've got the company Coca-Cola. They simply sell soft drinks and they've expanded their business to food as well. Southwest Airlines, they're a plane company who make money by selling flights. Furniture Mart, they sell furniture. Apple, they sell iPhones and other technology. Warren Buffett makes sure that before he buys a stock, he is capable of understanding the company. And you should really do the same. If you're into cars, look deeper into Ford, Toyota, Tesla. If you're into e-commerce, Amazon and Alibaba. If you like the online world, look at companies like Alphabet who own Google and YouTube. For pretty much every different passion or interest, there are stocks out there to be bought. Only buy those companies that you are capable of understanding. This is a rule that is particularly relevant to today's market conditions. You see, the thing about these current market conditions is we've had a bull market for about 11 years now. Stocks have gone up over 300%. Everyone thinks that they are geniuses when it comes to the stock market because everything's been rising and everyone is making money. This leads to one obvious thing. Everyone becomes greedy because they are overconfident in their investing skills. Now, what do you think this does to stock prices? Well, it overinflates prices. Everyone wants to invest, stock prices go higher, making it harder and harder each day to find a deal in the stock market. These are times when we need to be fearful and careful with our investments. And this is exactly what Buffett is doing. He has $214 billion in publicly traded stocks and $128 billion in cash. That's a lot of money in cash. Uh, he's employing a very careful strategy in these market conditions. You could say he's been fearful. But you can bet your bottom dollar that as soon as panic starts to set in with the stock market, Warren Buffett's greed will kick in and he will be snapping up a lot of stocks when they're on sale. If you do not follow this rule when it comes to investing, all of the other rules go out the window and your investing strategy will be useless. No matter how good the company, no matter how good its managers are, no matter how much you understand the company, it is not worth an infinite price. And you must make sure that the price you are buying for is below or at intrinsic value. Let me just explain this a little more clearly. Let's say you're looking at buying a Lamborghini. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that this is a solid, amazing quality car. There's no doubt that the manufacturers took amazing care and precision when developing this car. But the one question you need to ask is, is it worth its price tag? Is it worth that $350,000? Remember, no car is worth an infinite price and it's the exact same with a business slash stock. Which is why Warren Buffett says, no company, no matter how wonderful, is worth an infinite price. Price is what you pay, value is what you get. And in order to know the value of each stock, 
you first need to know how to calculate the intrinsic value. So that's why I'd recommend taking a free investing course by Sven Carlin. Uh, he's a quality investor. And in this course, he gives a comprehensive guide on how to invest. And obviously, included in this is how to value stocks, how to get the intrinsic value. So you can check this course in the link in this YouTube video description. Uh, or you can see his portfolio and the stocks that he's buying as well through his research platform. It's definitely worth the money if you you're looking for high long-term returns. Nevertheless, I'd say these seven rules are quite integral when it comes to investing. You need the correct mindset of knowing that a stock is a part of a business and if that business does well, you'll do well. Most news from those financial TV programs and most YouTubers is actually noise, not news. When you buy a stock, the best holding period is forever. Never buy a company you can't understand. Be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. And of course, only buy a stock at a price that makes sense. Follow these seven vital rules and you will beat most investors.